Hi everyone, it's James here from Pro Tools Expert. Now we are down in the shed today, down in the studio, and Paul from Emerging has joined us, uh, and he's brought with him Happy and Horus. No, not the uh, ancient Egyptian gods. Is that right? That's right. Not far off. Um, but these rather beautiful rack units that we are talking about being, um, well, they're IOs for Pro Tools, aren't they, effectively? That's right, uh, amongst other things. Yeah, so... Uh, so tell us more about Happy and um, his big brother or his, his dad. His, his dad. His yeah. dad, Horus. Okay, so uh, Happy and Horus are uh, primarily A to D, D to A's. Uh, very, very high quality. Um, they're also uh, part of the range of products from Merging that give you networked audio. So over using a protocol called Ravenna, which is also AS67. That's compatible. the important buzz term that we're hearing a lot. We heard it an awful lot at um, BVE a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, so these can basically be either Pro Tools HD? Yes, so it's HD and HDX IO with an option card that goes in one of the slots at the back. Sweet. Um, as well as being um, can operate on ASIO and Core Audio using over Ravenna AS67, which also then means they're compatible with any other AS, AS67 device, which can be um, now a, a Dante product, uh, Livewire, a number of other formats that are all talking the AS67 standard. So Cool. So we've got um, Happy and Horace plumbed up. Um, Happy is set up as our HDX primary I.O., isn't it? Yes. So so we've configured this now with... Uh, so the Happy has uh, two option slots in the back, and one of those is populated with a Pro Tools HDX card. Um, so we've connected directly to the HDX on the on the Mac, um, and we're basically replacing the, the Pro Tools I.O. box with, with a Happy. Um, the advantage of that is then you can um, have the A to D, D to A cards, you can have MADI, you can have AES, you can have ADAT, IO, all going to Pro Tools. And it correctly reports to Pro Tools, can be seen as an HDIO, HD MADI, or HD192. Um, and yeah, it's the perfect replacement for a higher end ADDA and digital audio format converter for your. Pro See, Tools. I'm, I'm really scared because we, whenever we meet, it costs me money. Absolutely. Um, we've been playing these back for about an hour and. I can already hear the difference. Uh, one of the other reasons for getting Paul over was to actually um, the addition of a sub down here, um, which we will talk about later. Um, but just hearing a few tracks that you've brought and some of my mixes and things, it's it's stunning. I mean, it's shockingly different. Yeah, that's the key. I mean, mind-blowingly shockingly different. Little things like real super top end. And the real, real bottom end are the things that I would say jump out at me instantly. Mm -hmm. uh, and the stereo spread, stereo image. Yep. Um, yep. Every time you've walked in this building, the the, the sound quality has got better. Um, so my ears thank you and my wallet hates you. <laughs> but, but these things, and the fact that the happy is, well, give us the numbers. So at the moment, I'm running uh, an HDIO and an HD192 to give me my 32 IO. So with a happy, I can do that in. So with a happy, you've got um, you have eight ASEBU as standard in out, eight ADAT, and the networked audio, and then you have two slots that can be populated with an AD card. All ADs on um, uh, either of the merging products are mic and line with stunning mic pre's as well. Um, so you have an AD card or a DA or a combined AD and DA card. Uh, you have a MADI card and you have a Pro Tools card. So with the Happy, which is limited to two slots, um, you've got to decide what combination of cards you want to put in for any particular session. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Are they user-fitable, yeah, user yeah. Two, two screws, pull it out. It's very easy. It's just, it's just slot in. Um, so the configuration we've got here today has got the HDX card in, and then we've got an 8-channel AD and DA card with mic and line in. Um, if we... To go for larger configurations, we would then look at the Horus, which is the, the bigger daddy of the Happy. The big brother. Which has um, Maddie, a single Maddy, a standard 24 ASEBU and the networked audio, and then has six slots to populate with AD, DA cards. Uh, you can put a second Maddy card in without taking up one of the slots, and then you can put up to two Pro Tools cards in both of those units. In fact, you can have uh, two Pro Tools HDX. So each Pro Tools card gives you 64 IO on each card 
at standard sample rates. Unfortunately, it does halve at uh, 80, 88 and 96 um, per card. Um, so if you look at the bigger Daddy Horus, you can actually load that up in a 2U box with 48 AD mic pre's and 48 DA's in a single 2U box. 48 channels yep. with mic pre's. Yeah. That's pretty damn cool. It is. Now, um, we haven't talked numbers yet, and again, I'm really scared about this, but um, obviously that's not a, chi a, a cheap solution, but... I mean, this stuff is taking a serious next level, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, this is probably the best A to D, D to A you can, you can spend your money on now. Um, I mean, to give you an indication of costs, uh, a happy base unit is just on, uh, it's around £1,500, X UK pounds. Um, each of the ADA cards are around the same, so £1,500 gives you eight, eight mic pre's and eight DA's in a card. Pro Tools card's around £700. Um, you then have the standard DA8 channel card, which is around £800, and the AD around 1000 if you're just going for eight channels of mm. AD. So it's that any combination of those can then be put in. But actually, um, that's not that much more expensive than other options. It's not. I mean, you think that uh, a typical happy configuration with uh, either 16 AD DA or, say, 8 AD DA with a Pro Tools card, you're looking at around £3,000. So... It's not it's not too silly when you hear the quality of it. I mean, mm. there are a lot of great mic pre's uh, on the market, and you have to listen to these because these are quite something. So we've got uh, my HDX rig rigged up with a happy. Uh, we've also got it networked to Horus, so they can all be seen at the same time by the same network. Yeah. Now, obviously, in this configuration, we're using it as our HDX front end, mm -hmm. but we could. Am I right in saying effectively ditch the HDX and just go in on the Ethernet, Ethernet cable? Correct. And that could then be our, H our HD quality yeah. IO into, into and out of Pro Tools or yeah. whichever DAW oh, we're choosing. Ever. Absolutely. So the, the key advantage of Ravenna, um, we supply you with an ASIO and a core audio driver, um, means that you can just take one of these boxes, plug it directly into the Ethernet port of your computer, whether that be your laptop or your um, main desktop and um, you basically select on a Mac core audio and you will see it as a core audio driver so it's seen as your external sound card um, you can set the latency is pretty low um, and then you could be running natively so you could be running a, a Pro Tools native um, and gaining the advantage of all of this you also which we can demonstrate in a sec we can remote control all the mic pre's from your Pro Tools session from the mixer um, we also have, uh, with any browser, you've then got a full mixer control of all your pre's for volume, phantom power, and so on. Um, but most importantly, when you've got more than one box, we're, we're plugging all of this into uh, a Ravenna-compatible switch, and we can now route audio from any of those boxes to any other door or from one box to another. So you start to be able to get into a situation where you have multiple units, Happy's and Horace's, within a facility, um, and it's simply an Ethernet connection between them. All the clocking and everything is done over the Ethernet, so it's just power and Ethernet. And you can have stage boxes, you can have a box in the control room, you can have a box in the booth. Um, no loss of quality. You can run standard Cat 5E, Cat 6 cable up to 100 meters, otherwise you can then go up to fiber and start running boxes kilometers away from each other. And the beauty of the, the Ravenna and AS67 protocol is it will make sure all the timing is correct, everything comes in at the same time. Everything just happens in the background as part yeah, of the yeah. protocol. Just plug and play. Very, very cool. Um, one of the other things you mentioned earlier about the, the option cards, I think it was the ADA card. Mm -hmm. So you've got an, an analog going in on a mic pre or a line input, as we'll show in a second on them. Mm -hmm. You've then got your feed off to your DAW, yeah. but you've also got a direct link Back. Okay, so that, that's on the AD card. Right. Um, so that has a feature called the direct out, so that uh, the signal coming in on the mic and line input, as soon as it's come through the, the mic pre, it's then it's remaining in, in the analog circuitry. It goes directly out again. There's no latencies, as well as going into the box to then be routed out to wherever you want. So it means that you can actually have, you can use it as a, as a, a stage splitter box or... Um, in an environment, say, with a, if you were working with a broadcast truck or something like that, you can give them a straight split analog feed um, with the quality of the mic pre's um, directly out again, as well as going into your system to record, or you could have a secondary recorder. 
The beauty of, um, of Ravenna and the networked audio as well is, of course, if you wanted to do a backup record with a second DAW, um, that's simply a question of putting the Ravenna driver, which is a free driver that we give you, onto another laptop. And you could be running another DAW doing a backup record because you can just multiple feed. Everything that's put onto the Ravenna network is then available to every computer. So you can have any number of computers plugged into that switch and they could all be taking the same feed. That's very cool because certainly in a live environment, let's say what's just happened recently, the Oscars, the last thing they really want to do is be trusting it down to one machine. Absolutely. I suspect they don't. Hmm. Um, I hope they don't. But, you know, it's a relatively simple process. Just say one cable, bang, hmm. back up. And if you want to do a triplicate backup, yeah, presumably another, another cable into the switch. That's it. As big as the switch goes, really. Amazing. Very, very cool. So one of the things we mentioned was this ability to be able to control the mic pre's. Yeah. And this is one of those things I want to get home, ram home. Inside the one or two U box, again, depending on the configuration, it also can contain the mic pre's. Yeah. So if you're cutting, if you're a mobile um, production sound engineer, um, or if you're doing broadcast or anything like that, these things are way above what you would normally consider quote unquote broadcast quality. Mm. And it's all going on inside a one or two U box. So potentially 24 mic pre's inside a two U box. Um, I mean, obviously you can, that can be configured up to 48 mic pre's in the two U box <laughs> and 16 mic pre's in the one U box. So and it's, it's perfect for going out and recording anything, a band you just, pop that in the studio if you've got some da's in as well you can then use that for all your headphone feeds mm -hmm. um for fold back and talk back and that sort of thing as well so um it is literally your laptop and a one year or two year box um i'm hearing that phrase rig. that i desperately try and avoid at all costs no brainer mm -hmm. god there's that word cost again so <laughs> let's have a quick look at, actually at the setup and how we've gone about it and what some of the the cleverness we've um discovered yep. as it would turn out okay um, that we've employed to get this all working. Cool. So with a bit of um, wiggling around of screens and things, so you can see both, of course, you wouldn't necessarily need to do this, but you can see here that I'm clicking on the pad button on Pro Tools uh, on an audio channel, and I can control many and various important things within the actual... Um, I'm happy. In the happy control. I can also do it on stereo channels, which is really quite handy. Not like, uh, I can control go between mic, mic and line and various other things if I need to, but pretty much anything I can control from Pro Tools will be directly reflected back in what's happening in the happy hardware. Correct. Correct. Very very cool. Now it was a little bit of a um, jiggery pokery to set up because obviously it's network and you have to create a MIDI device which is actually a network device. Mm -hmm. But you know, if I can work it out, um, didn't. We didn't even actually end up resorting to the Enough dreaded the manual, manual. Yeah. which is all cool. So the other stuff that we're looking at primarily to do with this thing is uh, this here piece of software. And Paul, actually, if you can probably just... Um... Yeah, so um, basically MT's Discovery, once you've uh, loaded the driver installer on, you are able to launch MT Discovery, which is basically an app. And this allows me to see on the network which uh, available devices we have. So we have the Horace and the Happy that we've got. And then we, we've we also connected, in addition to the HDX, we've actually got it plugged directly into the Mac and it's being seen as a core audio device. So if we weren't going to be running our I.O. through HDX, we could be running it as a core audio device. Um, and that, that then allows us to see, if I bring this up, we have a tool called Easy Connect. So this is like your sort of digital patch bay. So on the right-hand side here, this is showing me my available devices on the Ravenna AS67 network. And then on the left-hand side here, this is showing my available devices that stuff can be patched to. So if I look at the Happy, I've got uh, AS, ADAT, Pro Tools. And then I look at my Outs, and again, I've got my Pro Tools card. And if I look at Timecode, I've got ADA and DA as well. Um, so we, we can choose to select that ADA and actually connect that to the Pro Tools session via uh, Core Audio. Same thing with, with the Horus. So this is where when you've got uh, multiple devices on a network, we can see all of the devices, e.g. all of the boxes in all of the rooms 
and simply connect them all up together. So here we've got um, we've got 128 Maddy, we've got uh, 24 ADs on the Horus, and so on. And then we've got again with our outputs, we've actually got that Horus configured today with um, uh, three ADA cards, three DA cards. So yeah, so we've got 24, uh, sorry, 48 DAs. On that. So yeah, you just simply select the ones that you need for that particular session and assign them over to the the core audio bus. So this is what you would this utility runs when you're um, setting up for location. Everything gets remembered in the units locally. So once you've set it up and you boot it, it would automatically configure to the last configuration that it had. So the single most difficult thing that we have to or I have to try and get across because I'm not selling them um, is the sound quality of this thing. These things. Um, Dan, Dan, who's behind camera, um, and I have just sat here and just gone because it sounds so, it sounds so not different. It just sounds so clear, so clean. Um, the top end is just lovely. Stereo image was much improved. I would say even from, you know, it's just got, this room is just getting better and better with more gear that goes in it, which is often not the case, but, um, I think one of the things we should also try and get across is the fact that, yes, you're spending potentially a lot of money, but you're getting so much bang for the buck. Mm. When you start putting in the mic pre cards, the ADA cards, um, you know, that's potentially serious space you're saving and money you're saving in not having to buy all this other stuff. Mm. It, 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 these things really do work out, say, pound for pound, awesome i yeah, think yeah. i mean yeah. we've, we've done a couple of very quick mathematical calculations yes you can spend thousands of pounds on preamps in nice big shiny 2u boxes but the truth of the matter is the preamp circuit is probably only that big which is quite right. scary when you look at some of the stuff that's behind me mm. uh moving on so yeah i suppose the thing is where can the where can people out there in YouTube land actually try these things out because okay, so. we've had the opportunity to try them and listen to them and go, wow. Um, and my credit card is already groaning in my wallet. I, I, I know that. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, throughout the world, there are um, many resellers, pro audio resellers um, that have demo units available. Probably the best thing to do is to go to, um, if you're in the UK, you can go to our website, which is emerginguk.com. Uh, get in touch with us and we will help you to uh, find the right reseller or we can provide demo kit for you to try. Um, throughout the world, there are there is a distribution network. So if you go to merging.com uh, and select the sales tab, you can see the local distributor for your country um, who will then be able to advise which dealers locally they have that have demo units for you to go and try. But we have to say, just try them. Listen to them. If you find... Um if you're that serious and I'm sure you 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 look like you're putting your hand in your pocket most resellers will lend you gear to a certain extent or come out and certainly bring gear out to your facility i know that's certainly what mm -hmm. you guys do yep. um do it try them they are awesome and that's a word that gets used all too often um uh, in pro audio but these things seriously are worth a listen and worth a try out so for now paul Cool. Thank you, as ever. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you for clearing up my wallet. Um, <laughs> I've been James from Project Expert, and we'll see you again soon for some more gear talk.